Good afternoon. Thank you for joining us today. Kerasoft Technology would like to welcome you to our ServiceNow Federal Tech Talk, modernizing ERP systems using the ServiceNow platform. Joining us today from ServiceNow, we have Gus Pastor, ERP modernization leader in the U.S. public sector, and Samantha Sophia, advisory solution consultant in ERP modernization. Before we get started, I would like to quickly go over a few housekeeping items. Please note that all lines have been muted to reduce any kind of background noise during the presentation. If you have any questions throughout the webinar, please use the Q&A feature on the bottom of your screen, and we will do our best to answer by the end of the presentation or follow up with you offline. This webinar is being recorded and a copy will be emailed to you. Just to tell you a little bit about Kerasoft, we are a trusted government IT solutions provider supporting public sector organizations across federal, state, and local government agencies, including education and healthcare markets. At this time, I'd like to hand the floor over to our speakers. Gus, the floor is all yours. Hey, thank you so much. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. My name is Gus Pastor. Um, I am the ERP modernization leader that covers U.S. public sector, and I'm joined today by Samantha. Samantha, would you take a second and introduce yourself? Absolutely. Thanks, Gus. Hello, everyone. My name is Samantha Sophia, and I work with our low-code, no-code application customers on streamlining their business processes. Prior to coming over to ServiceNow, I was at SAP and I worked with ERP customers um, both in S4 HANA Cloud and S4. So I've seen a lot when it comes to uh, struggles and pitfalls of ERP, and I've heard a lot. Um, so I'm excited to talk to you today and bring in a solution for you. Awesome. Thank you so much. So as we uh, get started, let's uh, just cover a quick agenda and some of the items that we'll speak about. Um, we're going to tell this story through the platform lens. Uh, we will not talk specifically about any products. Uh, there are a few differentiating features that we'll make note of, uh, but in general, it's the opportunity to align ServiceNow as a platform and the success we've had across the enterprise and how that extends. Um, we'll also speak a little bit about kind of what our intent or purpose is in this space what we seek to do and what we clearly do not seek to do, followed up with a, a short customer story um, about a customer who's probably in a very similar place to you um, and some of the decisions you're trying to make, and just to share a little bit about their decision-making process and some of their experiences so far. Whenever we speak to our customers, um, one of the first questions that I like to lead with is uh, to ask, what is the first thing that comes to mind um, when they think about ServiceNow. More often than not, people think about ServiceNow through the lens of IT ticketing. I think that if we pull that story apart a little bit, we can actually tell a more elegant story of the platform and lend itself to shaping up where ServiceNow aims to play in the ERP domain. The gentleman on the screen right here is Fred Luddy. Fred founded ServiceNow back in 2000 notion that most, if not all, organizations fail to route work effectively across the enterprise. He sought to build a platform that did a couple of things, not the least of which is to bring configurability to the business with federated governance in mind. When he built this platform, it had three key pillars. The first pillar is a standardized set of developer tools. The second pillar is a standardized way in which we model data on the platform. And the third pillar is a standard way to which we can deliver service across the platform. He brought this to venture capitalists and venture cap said, hey, Fred, that sounds great. This is way too nebulous. We need a use case. Fred looked back at his background and realized that on a global basis, most if not all organizations understand how difficult it is to deliver reliable services through the lens of IT through and to the business. So Fred took his background and applied the notion of a configurable platform and dependable service to the IT domain. So the first use case that we brought to market to showcase ServiceNow's ability to deliver services across the enterprise was IT service management. As our customers grew with ServiceNow, they soon began to realize that they have their organizational context in one place. They can model their data and scale linearly without stacking up a ton of technical debt. And they have the ability to configure really quickly on the ServiceNow platform. So they took that notion of IT service management and they stripped IT away from that. And they began to deliver repeatable, reportable, and iterative services across the enterprise. 
The important thing to remember is that yes, ServiceNow is a platform company and we have best of breed out of box software. We also have best of breed, low and no code configurability, but all of those products and all of that, all of those tools are sewn together in a unified way. There is no middleware on the ServiceNow platform. And that's what allows us to bring a substantial amount of transformation very rapidly to our customers. So this is probably a story you're familiar with just around the complexity of the enterprise. The real thing that I'd like to call out here in terms of what brings value to you as an organization is that ServiceNow is a single task-based architecture. And that task-based architecture is what allows us to route work effectively across many different departments and teams. And in order to take ourselves seriously as a workflow platform across many different backend systems. The goal is that ServiceNow is seen as the entry point or the front door for an organization. And based off of who someone is, what their role is, their job, their function, we can prescribe serv digital services that pertain specifically to their job. Our customers ha that have positioned ServiceNow as the operating system of their enterprise have realized a ton of benefits. You probably think about some of the uh, benefits that stand out to you, like around low and no code configurability, uh, the ability to deploy very rapidly out of the box solutions. But one of the things that our customers are gravitating towards is that omni-channel experience for the internal employee. And that omni-channel experience is one of the things that is going to lend itself to our ERP narrative. As mentioned, governance is a key feature and function of the ServiceNow platform. It is role-based from the ground up. And if you trust us to put the right experiences in front of the right people in the right place at the right time, then that lends itself also to the ability to deliver the right development tools to the right sets of developers and the right applications at the right time. All of that comes together and position itself as a truly unified platform. Now, let me first start talking about this omni-channel and experiential layer that you see at the top of the screen. All of your departments have core and power users who do the majority of the lifting in that within the purpose of that organization. You also have occasional or temporary users, people who have to engage with and enrich data and services on the ServiceNow platform. All of this is delivered in an incredibly configurable and elegant uh, front-end user experience that allows us not only to put the right experiences in front of the right people, but to do so in modern ways. When you build or deploy with ServiceNow, you get the opportunity to combine many different panes of glass and to deliver a unified uh, portal-based uh, entry-level experience, but then you can also take a lot of those services and then you can configure them and deliver them in a mobile experience as well, allowing you to position ServiceNow based off of where your users need to meet ServiceNow. The workflow layer of this is really that layer of action. This is where we take that organizational map or topography of your organization and we allow ourselves through the use of low and no code, the ability to route work effectively and to traverse the enterprise while maintaining very high level um, data points and visualization of information so that decision makers can make decisions and people who work can spend more time working and less time getting work done, swivel chairing between a bunch of different systems. That one data model architectural approach uh, merges really cleanly at the integration layer. And with ServiceNow, we have a number of different ways of integrating. One of those ways we will talk about later today, but it's the opportunity to extend ServiceNow and actions taken in the ServiceNow platform and to cascade them across a multitude of different external systems giving end users the ability to engage with workflows in a configurable unified experience without you having to really change those backend systems of record at all. So when you think about ServiceNow, think about a couple of... ServiceNow is well positioned to help you solve for workflow issues that need to be routed across many different departments and teams. It also helps you solve for the opportunity to bring logic and engagement to that data and to a common unified experience, allowing you to route and distribute work across many different systems without people having to swivel chair and change a bunch of panes of glass. And finally, like we talked about, the opportunity to leverage a system that is built role-based from the ground up 
to put the right information in front of the right person at the right place at the right time. Now, all of that really comes together to tell an elegant story, but the elegant story has to have a problem that we seek to solve. The problem within the ERP domain, and before I build this slide out, let me just say a couple of things like, so there are no questions. We do not seek to rebuild the ER and our ERP system. We do not desire to own all of the data and organizational context that's been responsibly stored and organized and sanitized within your enterprise over the last 20 to 30 years. When customers built or bought these ERP systems, they bought these ERP systems for the right reasons. But those right reasons didn't come with it being necessarily the best place for people to engage. We see that there are really two sets of users within this community in the ERP domain. There is the set of users that are power users that spend all of their time within that ERP system. They know it backwards and forwards. And then there is the occasional user base that logs in on a weekly or monthly, quarterly, or even annual basis. That login and that engagement, um, it requires them to understand where they need to go and what system they need to hit and at what time. And that creates a lot of convoluted experiences. And when people have convoluted or, or complex experiences in, in uh, with regards to engaging digitally, a lot of times what happens is they find other ways of working. On top of that, when a legacy system is complex or requires a bunch of different uh, proprietary skill sets in order to develop or build on that system, typically that backlog begins to stack up. As lines of business or mission areas have new things that they need to bring to that experience, their ability to have that new feature or function deployed rapidly, to be able to tell how long it's going to take to be built, or the ability to know when it will actually be built, is something that is, is a miss. And that, that um, incongruence forces people to, again, find other ways of working, whether that be through shared email inboxes or spreadsheets um, or no process at all. This creates a lot of shadow work outside of these very key systems that are the lifeblood of your organization. And really the last key challenge within the ERP space that we see is poor user experience. We talked about it a little bit around the difficulty to innovate, but there's no shortage of technology vendors or partners or, or government to bring new technology to market. But there is complexity around getting end users the opportunity to consume at scale to drive up that hockey stick um, of end user consumption of, of, of this technology that you seek to introduce. So what we see at ServiceNow is that's where our great opportunity is. And we'll talk about that in a second, but I did wanna give Samantha an opportunity just to share some thoughts as she comes um, from a, a pretty rich background in the ERP domain. So Samantha, I don't, I don't know if you have any thoughts that you'd like to share. Yes, absolutely. So everything else that you touched on when it comes to uh, the heavy customized systems, not being able to get their work done, finding different ways of working, world of SAP customers and ERP customers in general. ERP was never designed to handle the amount of customization and logic that's been applied to it. So SAPs and other ERP providers answer to that is moving cust uh, customers over into a cloud environment. At SAP, if you're working with them, that would be um, S4 HANA Cloud. You might have heard that a couple of times. And what they're promising to deliver on is a clean core methodology. So what they're promising customers is moving those customizations outside your ERP environment, leveraging the business technology platform known as BTP and keeping the core clean so that way you can run more efficiently. I, I was just reading an article this morning that was about a list, long list of customer complaints when it comes to BTP's performance and the move to the cloud not being always the right fit for all customers. Why? When it comes to an integration standpoint, BTP was not an SAP cloud, uh, SAP native application. It was acquired. So it was never written in the same programming language of other SAP's application. In addition, you may be familiar with Ariba, which is SAP's procurement arm. 
that's also just an SAP branded, not SAP native solution, which means from a technical standpoint, it has a hard time communicating. It has a hard time integrating. So that's something to consider when you're thinking about where you're going to make those customizations, how you're going to propel the business forward. You're going to want to work with a company like ServiceNow who can integrate well with both SAP and non-SAP systems of record that it's going to be able to handle across your enterprise. In addition, we can't have a conversation today without talking about AI. With SAP, the AI that they're embedding in their ERP is mostly getting deployed in their public cloud deployment option, which is under the Grow commercial bundle that they're offering their customers. Why is this point so important to you? It's not FedRAMP certified. So none of you on the phone are going to be able to take advantage of those pre-delivered workflows, automation, uh, chatbot, virtual agents that SAP is deploying because it's not being delivered under a flavor of ERP that's going to be able to suit your business. It's not going to be compliant. Um, this is why we're really here to talk today and why we have a reason to be here is because ServiceNow can help with this, as Gus, men as Gus mentioned, and we're going to get into that as we proceed. So Gus, go ahead. I'll hand it back to you. All right. Thank you. Um, so just to recap here, a couple of key takeaways. So the complexity of these systems make innovation really challenging. Um, these processes have to happen or have to be orchestrated across many different uh, sources of data, sometimes through the same product family, but not everything in that product family really works and plays well together. We see our great opportunity as helping organizations move work across these systems and really consolidating that layer of engagement and driving up digital adoption of these new experiences um, and, those ex and the ability to deliver those experiences to the right people in the right place at the right time prompting them to take an informed action that will ultimately enrich your data only brings more value back to the enterprise. And that's really where we see um, ourselves being situated. Now, I said a few minutes ago that we do not seek to become an ERP system. Um, we think that there are two very distinct categories of software within this domain. The first you probably know and assume um, this is where your organizational investments and really the lifeblood of your organization has lived for the last couple of decades. Um, these are systems that are designed for uh, for control, tracking these uh, core financial um, uh, transactions and processes. Um, and really just it's all about maintaining single source of truth. And it's all about, you know, clean, sanitized data. But. It also comes with its complexities when it comes to delivering new, new experiences and the ability or opportunity to aggregate multiple different sources of data into one unified pane of glass without uh, really jeopardizing that single source of truth. And that's where we think the second um, software category in the ERP domain is gonna live for service now. And that's really a system that's designed for action that unifies people and processes and technology and it, it really just brings uh, innovation to the fingertips of, of everyone in the organization. It makes configuration and deployment far more simple, and that uh, allows organizations to deliver a very uh, faster, more rapid time to value to modernize processes and experiences without um, kind of bringing into question the sanctity of that backend information. So Samantha, I'll pass it over to here. I know we've talked a little bit about um, that notion of clean core, kind of give us some of your thoughts on that um, and, and talk talk us through this a little bit. Yes. So as I was mentioning previously, the promise of a clean core with just relying on ERP and SAPs and Oracle's alike technology platform is not what's happening in reality, right? We are seeing lots of communications happening outside of the core environment, especially when I was going through the custom coding and custom read sends to uh, read scanners to understand how ERP was being leveraged. And there are a lot of things that were not being done with inside of ERP and were doing somewhere else and that data was getting lost. So that leads to a true problem when it comes to tracking, uh, it comes to audit time and many other uh, 
predictive analytic capabilities that you would hope to get by working solely and doing your work in ERP that you're not able to leverage. So instead of relying just on these outsides of for a form of communication, just touching and using your ERP system um, to, to run your financials and control your business, what we're proposing at ServiceNow is that you leverage our workflow capabilities, streamline your business process, reduce the amount of manual effort, reduce the amount of leakage and the pinging the emails back and forth that's happening outside of your environment. That way you can truly automate the way that you work and make the most out of your IT investment. Gus, anything else you'd like to add? No, I, I think that's the way of looking at it. And look, this isn't just limited to um, its impact in, within the SAP world. This is, you know, an architectural North Star. And, you know, a clean core is, is something that I think people seek to adopt. Um, maybe a lean core is, is a better way of describing it in that it's picking the right place for the right processes. Again, there are absolutely a long laundry list of things that belong within the core processes of that ERP domain but your business cannot necessarily be patterned into the interpretation of a software vendor. What you need is the ability to configure your experiences that feed those core processes in a way that maintain that integrity and the sanctity of the processes running in that system. And it'll allow you to adopt um, an architectural and a technology strategy that will lend itself to a more sustainable enterprise. And I think that's that's really one of the major key arguments here. And, and we'll, we will talk about this in a few slides, but um, it's the opportunity to get better over time. Um, it's the opportunity to distribute that risk and to pick software vendors um, that do really key things within their core competency and to lean on them for that. Uh, so that's really where we kind of position ourselves. Like we're not saying that you will get to a clean core because of service now. It is the decision to separate those two systems that lend itself to that direction that you're heading. And then uh, on the next slide, um, as we move over to this, one of the things I said earlier is we will talk about some of the more uh, differentiating elements of the platform, non-real product specific, but more so feature wise. I mean, one of the things that we wanted to bring, uh, bring to bear today was this uh, conversation around something that we call Data Hub. So Samantha, if you would be so kind as to just share a few thoughts on how you would summarize Data Hub um, and, and some of the key areas you think it, it's going to lend value to organizations that are kind of thinking about this notion of um, extending a platform across these ERP systems. Mm -hmm. So ERP Data Hub is, is pretty revolutionary. Um, it's very hard to extract data from ERP systems. For those of you who have tried to done this or your teams have tried to done this, you know the pains. Um, you have to have people with domain expertise when it comes to ABOP. So what we've done at, at ServiceNow is simplified this process for you. We've designed a plug and play methodology when it comes to building apps, accessing uh, pre-built templates, tables, and modeling tools so that way you can extract data from your ERP system without ever having to go into the back end of an ERP system, without having to even go into Fiori Launchpad, getting the information back at your fingertips so that way you can make decisions about your business and automate a lot of those workflows that are happening with inside of your ERP system. And not just with inside your ERP system, even though I'm talking about ERP Data Hub right now, this is applicable across your enterprise, which was what Gus was alluding to earlier. One comment that I want you to think about as we leave today is just think about how much time, how much money that you would save by not having to build those templates, build those codes so that way you can get an app out in production in a matter of weeks. Think about what you could do with that time saving by leveraging ServiceNow. Anything to add, Gus? No, ma'am. I think you did a great job there. Thank you. So let's uh, take a peek about how this applies itself. Um, so I, we talked about the value of low and no code tooling. Um, in, this, in this kind of example, we'll use uh, the notion of workflows being built within um, our low and no code or with our low and no code tool set and being published to the ServiceNow platform. 
Um, an end user is going to seek to engage with that workflow through a number of different engagement layers. Um, let's imagine for a second is a kind of global uh, portal-based experience. And based off of who that person is, they see the things that pertain to their job. They're going to be prompted to execute a number of different fields or a number of different actions. That action is then going to run through its loops and be distributed or aligned to the people on the back end that can really fulfill or execute those requests. Um, in the meantime, though, that workflow is also going to be um, directed to reach out to another system to pull relevant information and to put it in front of that user. And that is where we're going to reach out um, and touch both Data Hub and the integration hub layer. Data Hub is how we kind of um, outline that table hierarchy or the structure from SAP, done so in ServiceNow, so that we have a more granular link uh, between the two systems. And then we'll engage directly with the mid server over here on this side and we'll pull that information through or we'll write to that other system and you can uh, leverage kind of asynchronous replication or, or reads and writes uh, through, through the middleware layer that way or mid server layer that way. Um, but look, Data Hub is available to be consumed really throughout the ServiceNow platform. Um, so it, if you think about ServiceNow, ServiceNow isn't just building apps, it's the opportunity to choose um, either out of the box or the opportunity to configure. A lot of times, if you think about the ERP domain, like you're going to have things that exist in the HR space. You'll have things that are core financials or logistics and supply chain. ServiceNow has best of breed products that align um, to the entire spectrum. So you have the opportunity to take things from ServiceNow as a starting point to extend it with low and no code tooling, and then to leverage Data Hub to be able to pull uh, large volumes of data or to read and write between systems pretty elegantly, uh, which uh, over time will, will solve a lot of those uh, a lot of those problems between systems. So uh, Samantha, I'll, I'll cover this first, but if you have anything you want to add, please uh, feel free. Um, I think really the real opportunity here is thinking about ServiceNow, the platform. Uh, one of the challenges that I think a lot of the ERP systems are going to have is how they make themselves relevant to the rest of the enterprise uh, landscape within a customer. ServiceNow is a platform that positions itself to put the right information in front of the right person. And we have an omni-channel engaging experience that, like I've said, based on who someone is, we put the right things in front of the right people. Positioning this ERP uh, conversation isn't just about like technical plumbing and how we move information between systems, but really how we just build workflows either. It's a lot about that engagement layer. Um, and employee center, or as we refer to it as EC Pro, it really is where that omni-channel experience is going to happen. So in this scenario here, um, a customer has kind of looked at their business process, and they've looked at that business process in alignment to out-of-the-box processes from their ERP vendor, and they've identified a gap. They've then taken that gap and they've rationalized it into an if-then statement. They can figure that on the ServiceNow platform using our low and no code tool set, or they've aligned it to an out of the box workflow and extended that. Um, then the logic of the business process will take over. And at a certain point in the business process, it will connect into Data Hub, which will then tie into SAP and be able to push and pull information, ultimately positioning it back within that employee center. And the reason I think that's important is it goes back to something we said earlier. So there's really no shortage of capability to deliver technical um, outcomes through, through the government. Um, but there is a shortage of people's ability, willingness, or tolerance um, to operate between a bunch of different panes of glass and systems. And I think that's where ServiceNow as a platform and as a company can lend itself to a ton of value is if with those occasional and periodic users, having them, having them spend time in ServiceNow where they're already requesting information around their HR benefits or fulfilling something in one of their mission workflows, uh, or maybe requesting access to a, a special network or password reset, that omni-channel and standardized experience is going to allow end users to adopt the new things that your organization brings to bear at a much, much higher rate of speed. And that's where I think this is, um, this is pretty promising for our customers who are really taking not that platform or siloed lens, but that big organizational-wide impact approach. 
So if you take um, really that, that kind of gap that we had kind of mentioned in terms of, hey, I've got a business process, let's say 70% of it aligns to out of the box functionality from this ERP vendor, but there's this you know, 30% or 20% over here that really doesn't fit. And we do not want to spend a bunch of time and money mucking up the core over here. That's a process and, a, and kind of a, an organizational endeavor we're trying to get away from. That's where ServiceNow comes in. Um, so Samantha, if you would just take a few minutes and really talk about um, kind of the time to value and that level of expertise and just talk about it from, from your background and your experiences. Absolutely. So in the S4 HANA ERP world, SAP world, when we were talking about projects and even upgrading systems, if you've been through this before, planning to do this, you know that those timelines are long. We're talking several years to, or sorry, several months to a year. Sometimes it's a year and a half. Sometimes it can breach into the two-year mark. Now, when we talk about realizing value, that's a whole different conversation. So when you talk about just getting the software implemented, just getting it upgraded, then you talk about actually realizing value out of the solution and getting your investment back, that's a whole different timeline. Now at ServiceNow, what we've done is shorten that timeline so that way you can make the most out of your existing ERP investment and your ServiceNow investment and reduce it significantly. There was a customer who built a fully functioning um, automating workflow virtual agent leveraging the Now platform in a matter of three weeks. Okay, three weeks. That type of short timeline, weeks, even two months is something that's unheard of when it comes to the SAP projects and planning. And that's that's okay, and that's the nature of those projects, but this is going to get you a lot more time to value a lot quicker. You're going to be able to get the benefits back, streamline your business processes without disrupting your upgrades, your projects that you're already doing with your ERP provider. Get us back to you. Thank you, ma'am. All right, so let's um let's kind of tie this together with with an industry term that's that's really beginning to to gain steam. It's this notion of the agility layer. Um, the agility layer is really just kind of everything that ServiceNow and that we've talked about over the last uh, thirty minutes or so, bringing that all together into one consumable concept. That consumable concept is the opportunity to look to deliver the right experiences to the right people. The opportunity to prescribe. Um, how work should move across a team or multiple teams based off of what works for your business and the opportunity to iterate on those experiences over time. That's really what positions itself into the agility layer. Now, look, there are a lot of low and no code platforms that are out there. There are a lot of uh, creative and maybe sometimes more cost effective ways to build forms and to collect information. But it's what you do with that information after it's been collected that is of the utmost importance and your ability to organize and align that information or that context to the right people, and then to cascade it across the right systems, um, introduces a ton of organizational opportunity or agility to pick the right systems for the right jobs and to kind of distribute that risk and that opportunity across a, a multitude of software vendors. So um, let's quickly just kind of recap on what we are and, and what we're not. Um, for us, where we see ourselves playing is that orchestration layer of how people engage with and enrich that information. And then the um, processes in which that information routes or maps itself into a single source of truth or into um, an external system of record. So our ability to put the right experiences in front of the right people, to um, deliver reliable and repeatable services, to be able to audit, report, um, and then make informed actions based off of data and how work is progressing, um, to be able to provide a more enriched system over the course of time is really where ServiceNow plays. We do not seek to run the core uh, transactions from your ERP vendors. We do not want to fully replace Oracle or ServiceNow, um, excuse me, or SAP or Workday. 
Um, we really just want to bridge the gap between the conflicts of what that system, what those systems are designed to do, and then what those end users need in order for that system to continue to be really valuable. Like that's a huge opportunity for us to bridge the gap for, and that's really where we're going to spend our time um, and invest with our customers to provide a, a better experience across the board. So uh, just at a, at a very high level um, and, and said very simply, system of action over a bunch of different systems of record, your ability to put the right information in front of the right people and not be limited to have to repropagate data from one system to another, provides you a ton of architectural and technology choices. And uh, if you think back to the example or the story I told at the beginning, where you know Fred Luddy built um, IT service management on the platform to show how we can route work from somebody who needs something to somebody who can do something. We can take that concept of IT, we can strip it away, and we can really apply it to anything that an organization struggles with from a workflow standpoint. And we believe that the ERP domain is ripe um, for us to, to target and bring transformation uh, to our customers with regards to how they, how they put the right work in front of the right people and provide a better level of experience. So um, I will move over here and just tell a really quick customer journey story. Um, this is uh, from one of our defense or defense adjacent customers and in partnership with uh, one of our great uh, system integrators uh, had, partnered to, uh, had partnered to really solve this problem. Uh, originally the problem started with some just very basic workflow complexity. Um, this, this customer had elected to choose ServiceNow to um, move some work in the finance and the procurement domain across different uh, organizations and then leveraged uh, both spokes and robotics to be able to integrate and push and pull data from one system to ServiceNow. Um, but once they started to realize the power of routing work, it was very quickly met at this inflection point of two other problems. Um, the highest level problem, in my opinion, and this is really what allowed us um, to kind of work with this customer to solve this bigger organizational issue, is the proliferation of, of engagement. Um, many different screens for many different systems. I think on average, um, in enterprise-wide, I think I, I saw something where uh, most employees have to navigate like 17 to 20 different uh, panes of glass just to get things done during the day. So the opportunity um, to leverage the power of workflow at the inflection point of uh, building a kind of immersive employee experience or that omni-channel experience that in an unbiased or, or nondescript way allowed our customer to route work across many different systems it came at the same time as, as this uh, migration to uh, S4. And a couple of very strategic uh, executives in the organization saw what ServiceNow was bringing to bear and they wanted to invest and understand more about how we could provide a more rich table to table type of integration model um, to be able to orchestrate and abstract data from one system, put it in front of the right systems and the right people to engage and enrich with that data without sacrificing of that and data in that ERP system. Um, so again, like it, it's been a, an awesome experience to be a part of, uh, both in partnership with one of uh, our major uh, system integrators uh, within the federal domain, um, but also with a customer who really sees ServiceNow as the operating system of the enterprise and saw a great opportunity to um, deliver outcomes and transformation in a very short amount of time across many different really complex problems. Uh, so we're really proud of, of organizations kind of starting um, to see this notion of the agility layer, uh, to take that concept of the agility layer, to apply it to employee engagement problems and to problems that they seek to solve um, and distribute risk across many different enterprise systems and, and pick the best tool for the job. So that about concludes it from the ServiceNow perspective uh, with regards to content that we have to share. Um, I will flip over here in a second and look to see if we have any questions in the chat that we need to uh, bring bubble up. Uh, but just hang on a quick second. Let's see what we got. Sure, Gus, I can read one to you. Uh, okay. One I think was addressing a question or a comment that you made. And it was, is using service now uh, not going to help me get to a clean core? Is this the case for a green field application? I can back you up on the answer as well. No, you go ahead and take it. Yep. 
I I think I think what um what Gus was trying to say when he was saying that we aren't addressing the core, meaning that we're not we're not going to reinvent your ERP system what's serving to do is take those customizations and move them outside the core so to clarify absolutely yes we are going to help you get to a clean core and then when it comes to a greenfield implementation with s Honda, that's when we would have the opportunity to work with you on some process design we could look at the if you're already on ecc um or if if you're doing a completely brand new implementation we'd handle it a bit differently but we'd be able to look at what your what you've customized in your ecc environment and see how we can leverage uh, data hub to rework those uh, workflows that you have going on so that's a conversation that we'd have together i hope that answers your question awesome thank you um, and I see one more question in here, and I'm not sure I understand all the context. I'll read it off and and i'll I'll give an answer and, and make a few assumptions. Um, and if if you'd like to uh, get some more information about this, then uh, feel free to reach out to your uh, service now account executive and they'll pull us in and we can provide a a more elegant answer. But I believe the question reads as if we build a process in service now for integration with an ERP system, and then later move um, using ERP plus, will that break the integration uh, process significantly or will it more or less carry over with a few minor tweaks? Um, and I think what the question here is, is asking is, um, if we start by building something in ServiceNow using low and no code tools, and then um, that uh, success compounds into maybe consuming an out of the box product on the platform, uh, will it break that integration or that work that's been done um, or we'll be able to carry it forward with a few minor tweaks. And uh, as is true with anything and any major platform, the answer is going to be, it depends. Um, if you work with your partners in the ecosystem to make sure that they understand kind of not what the current state outcome needs to be, but really the future state and the direction you're going, uh, we can make architectural build or deployment decisions um, that will lend itself to less disruptive changes as you move from maybe a scoped application to then uh, moving something over. With the key portion of this being at the workflow layer, yes, questions have to be asked and questions have to be answered with as the level of effort. But at the integration layer, um, I've made note of a, key, of a couple of key things. One, data hub. Data Hub is available uh, to our customers that consume it, whether it's in out-of-the-box out applications or products or available to be consumed through things that you build. Um, also, the ability to use spokes. Um, spokes are APIs that ServiceNow uh, builds and supports with our partners in the ISV ecosystem um, to leverage these spokes to be able to kind of pave the road that you drive down as data moves back and forth. Um, data hub and the spokes would require much less tweaking than something at the workflow layer. So you have to kind of think about the full scope of the different components that you're talking about. Um, but I, I would encourage you both to partner both with ServiceNow uh, and with your partners to be able to make a really strong architectural and, and financial decision based off of licensing at the same time. So a ton of different considerations, but that's kind of why we're here uh, to partner based on some of these more abstract things. So. Um, that wraps it up for all the questions that are in the chat. Um, I will, will hang on here for another minute or two and see if anything else rolls in. Uh, but I want to thank everybody for spending time with us, um, this afternoon and just learning a little bit more about how the platform of service now at a high level can apply itself to kind of solving some of the complexities within the ERP domain. So thank you all very much for spending time with us today and, and we'll hang out for just another few more minutes. Uh, to see if any other questions need to be answered. Thank you. Thank you all.
I'm not seeing anything else come through. So thank you guys so much. I'd like to thank all of our participants as well as our speakers for being with us today. We hope the information you received during this webinar has been helpful. If you have any further questions or you'd like to request more information, please feel free to reach out. Thank you again and have a great day. Thank you. Bye.